In today's tutorial, let's learn how to do the Tad O plaid throw, another free pattern available on yarnspirations.com. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. In today's tutorial we're going to work on the Tattle Plaid Throw. This is a very very easy pattern using the Bernat Blanket as you see in the background. I'd like to explain a few things before getting started. This is really really simple. Even beginners can do this pattern. So let's review the pattern really quickly. So we have the materials and you'll see that there's four yarns uh, being made. When we look at the down view just like so you'll see all four colors in there easier over here than you would here. And then you can see oh my goodness it's six balls, two balls, one balls and three balls. These are the Christmas size balls that you see here. These are the 150 grams. The ones that you normally find in the stores are normally 300 grams which are twice the size. So if you wanna take some quick notes here I did it. So the point is is that six balls are the 150 grams but if you only want to use the big ones if you have these in stock you only need three balls and then you only need one of the next color, a half of the next color and one and a half of the final color if you want to substitute using bigger balls just like so. So let's uh, quickly talk about um, what we're looking at from the down perspective and what we see here with the stripe patterning just like that. So we're going to be starting off this pattern right here and we're going to be starting and just going down. It's such a simple concept it's only just this little piece of paper in order to make it work. You're going to notice that the stripe patterning is available to you. So the first ten rows are gonna be A. So what is A? You look over here it's green. B is going to be for four colors and what's B? It's fuchsia and then A again and then C A and you can just make check marks as you go in order to make it. So here's what it looks like as a bigger version. So you can see that uh, with A is 10 rows right at the start and then we switch off with B for four colors uh, for four rows and that's uh, the fuchsia color I believe and then you can see how it's striping. So you can see that the fuchsias are kind of balancing each other. You have the teals and then the purple right in the middle. Also with the uh, the strands that are coming down through here there's only seven of these strands and because of that you'll see that there's two of the same color one and then a different color right in the middle and then a teal again and then two of the same color to bring it in balance. So the whole concept for this particular afghan is to make a large mesh just like you see and these are just three strands just pulled and weaved through the whole thing and then sewn into place at the bottom and the top uh, pieces just like so. If you wanna make a fringe at this particular point you could do so if you wish. I probably wouldn't recommend it but just because this is a Christmas uh, color orientation you can just switch off your colors for whatever you have in stock and still have the same effect. Now this also here it says that it's 27 inches from the end Okay, just to measure over to start so you don't have to count the amount of spaces just about 27 inches. So if you wanna move this just don't do 27 just do it to something else. If you wanna add more just be conscientious that you will use more yarn if you add more but you can have a lot of fun with this particular concept if you wish. In today's tutorial I'm going to use a size L 8 millimeter crochet hook. It asks for a 9 millimeter size crochet hook uh, or a size M. Um, I don't have that in stock so I'm going to use this one instead. Um, I also don't have the Christmas colors. I only have like one ball of each of the Christmas colors here in stock so I'm gonna substitute with a different color yarn and mine is just gonna be a very miniature sample to show you how to make the mesh, how to weave it and how to uh, do the border of this particular afghan. So let's get started right now. So let's begin to make the mesh. So I'm just gonna take a color green because that's what I have here and I'm going to create a slip knot and let's insert our hook. So if you wanna do this afghan as per written it's 114 is your chain but if you wanna change the sizes just keep it an even number in order to make it work. Okay so an even number. So I'm gonna do a miniature sample so I'm only gonna do I think 20 this time. So remember the slip knot on the hook never counts as one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So there is my even number. Look how big that is already. That's only twenty chains so think about hundred and fourteen you have a very nice size afghan. So let's uh, keep on going. Uh, row number one. So row number one we want to go one half double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So let's count back. So don't count the one that's on the hook. Here's one underneath. So one, 
two, three, and four. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. Simply turn it over and get the back hump only. Just make sure you wrap the hook first to do a half double crochet. So just insert into the chain, pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Just yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, so that first one because you went four chain from the hook counts as a double crochet. Sorry, counts as a half double crochet and a chain one. So now that you have that done, you're going to chain one and you're going to skip the next chain that's available to you and go to the second one over and half double crochet again. And we're going to do that all the way across this chain. The starting chain is always the most pain. So just stick it out because once you get beyond this one it can, becomes easy. Chain one, skip the next chain and go to the second one over for another half double crochet. So you can see that I'm creating the mesh that you're going to be playing with when you go to do those strands work. Okay, so chain one or skip one chain, go to the second over for a half double crochet. So please do that all the way down your uh, chain that you're uh, doing. And again, if you're substituting different sizes then you'll have a different size chain but it doesn't matter as long as you kept your uh, chain in an even number. So I'll meet you at the end of this chain and I'll see you there in just a moment. So coming up all the way to the end I'm chaining one and then I'm going into the last one. If you have stitches that are left over at the end just unravel the final. So if for example say you had another chain here just take this string and just kind of pull it out and it will get rid of that extra chain if you have one left over. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It looks like a perfect like a ladder. Okay, but it's a mesh and so now we're going to maintain this mesh for the entire project. The only difference is that every now and then we have to change colors as per the striping. And remember we're gonna be doing 10 colors of green or, or 10 rows of green and then we switch off for four rows of B and then two rows of A, two rows of C and etc. and that's on the pattern. Let's, uh, I'm gonna show you how to turn the work and move up one, uh, one row and then I'm gonna show you again then how to change colors to be able to do the striping in the, in the uh, horizontal direction. Let's move up to row number two. We're gonna turn our work. So this time we're going to start off and this is how we start off every row going forward for the rest of this project. The only difference is that every now and then we have to change the colors in order to keep the patterning looking cool. So we're going to chain three. Now normally in crochet chaining three equals a double crochet but in this case what it's equaling is one half double crochet and a chain one. If you can remember that it's pretty easy. So what we need to do is that we need to go into the tops of each one of these half double crochets that you have in the row below. We wanna create like a mesh like you would see in a window um, in a window, uh, what's that, in a window screen. So we're going to just yarn over and we're going to come into the top of the first one. So it's just gonna be right in the top of the first half double crochet. If you are off and you're gonna half double crochet, if you come into the one right before it what's gonna happen is your afghan is gonna grow up on an on a angle and you don't want that. So then chain one and look for the next one. So once you get the first one in you can see here's the next one that you wanna skip and then there's the next one that you should go into. So it's just a matter of getting that first one established in the row and you can easily just follow it across. So chain one after each one and continue that same patterning going all the way across. So the half double crochets are creating the mesh and I think they've done half double crochet because half double crochet is not as tall as double crochet and with doing open mesh work like this you would have like pretty excessive gaps. You would use a lot more yarn too. So we're just coming right to the end of the other side. So of course yours will be bigger if you're doing the afghan as you see in the picture. But you can see how fast it goes and always the starting is always the most hardest because you don't have a lot of project to hang on to and once you uh, get the rhythm of this it goes really quick. So we still have two more stitches left. We have this one and this one. So don't forget that. Let me show you where to put it. your hook into the last one. So we still wanna chain one first. Now this was a chaining of three. So we wanna come to the chain. Okay, so half double crochet into the third chain. And that will allow you to have that open mesh work at the end. So let me show you how to change color because every row is now the same. You can see the half double crochets are sitting on top of each other. But let me show you how to change color if you would like to do so within this pattern. To change color what I like to do is just trim my yarn and I'm not yet finished so and I'm just gonna just yarn over and pull through that strand. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my hook and just put and just weave that in through some stitch work. What's gonna happen is that next time we come around here we're going to 
um, come up with the next uh, row and by doing it like this you're going to trap it in the next row underneath the stitching and it pretty much locks onto each other. Remember crochet is like not work right? So because of the way that you're forming the crochet it, it's basically one big knot all just really fancy. So it wants to tighten on onto each other naturally. So I go about that far and then I'm just gonna leave this in until I get to the next row and then I'll show you what to do at that point. So taking my next color I'm just gonna do some gray here. I'm going to start off with a slip knot first and I'm gonna put it on my hook. So this is where I finished off. So I wanna turn my work first, okay? And I wanna insert it into the top of the, of the last half double crochet that I was in. And I wanna take the straggler, which is the, the loose end here and the yarn leading to the ball. I wanna just be conscientious about, but just take the one leading to the ball and pull through. It just, um, it's like a slip stitch. And then take the yarn st straggler and the one leading to the ball and just chain twice, one, and just wrap them both. This will get it nice and secure and trap it underneath. And then I want you to chain one more time so without that second one here. So this straggler is now permanently stuck into position. You can trim that afterwards. So then you have your half double crochet which is two chains and the third chain is your chain one. And you wanna maintain this pattern again. So you're going to just come on top of the first um, half double crochet. Just again look where it is. Okay, and you wanna half double crochet the mesh in into there. Chain one and come on to the next one. And then half double, or chain one and then half double crochet into the next one. You see that? So the mesh is pretty much sticking uh, right where it should. Should be right on top of each other. And you can see that this is where the straggler is hanging out. So once I get beyond this stitch I'm just gonna safely just trim that straggler right now. Get it out of my way. You can see it's gotten stuck under the stitches along the way. And I wanna chain one and keep on going. So that would be how you would change the colors uh, to do this going all the way across. Um, for your particular thing. So you can follow the um, patterning for the color changes. So when I come back I'm going to show you how to um, do the strands down, the weaving effect. Uh, that's really really simple and then I'm gonna show you the two um, rounds for the border in order to complete this afghan. When you come to the end don't forget you have to come into the chain work. So you gotta leave one chain empty and come to the second one over and half double crochet. And that's the only way to maintain that on the edge. So this is what it looks like. So you can see that the mesh is right on top of each other just like a window screen like so. So let's, uh, I'm gonna fasten this off and I'm going to show you how to do the strands and I fasten off the same way that I just change colors and we still have to do a border with this as well so you don't have to sew it in at all at this point because the border is probably gonna trap it into position anyway. Okay. So let's get some, let's talk about the strands going in and do all that next. So we're now ready to do the strands that you see. There's a total of seven of them that you see going on here. So it's fuchsia, fuchsia, teal, purple, teal, fuchsia, fuchsia. So it's really quite easy. Each one of these that you see are made up of three strands that are put together and just weaved together in order to give it the thickness that you need. Okay, so some people prefer to chain this kind of thing. If you're gonna do that it will change your yarn quantities. Just be very conscientious of that if you, if you want to do it that way. Again it's your creativity, it's up to you. Uh, so basically what I would do if I were you is that there's three different colors of the strands. Just take one of each of the color from the, from the ball itself and just keep pulling until you get 90 inches and then cut it. And then you'll, each three will be a different color or each uh, strand will be a different color and then you can continue to do that but it's just a lot easier to measure multiples like this at one time than it is to do one strand get 90, do another strand get 90 when you can actually do a multiple. And 90 you will have a little bit left over so it's just a matter of uh, having a little bit left over so you can play with that as well. So let's uh, get our strands ready and then I'm gonna show you how to weave them in at, at this time. To figure out where the strands are going 
if you look at the instructions it says that if you look from the right edge it'll go 27 inches. You can move these wherever you want to. So if you want this more centered you can move it more to the center. There's only a total of seven of these if you wish. And again the creativity is up to you. So you can't move these because you've already done it but this you can move for sure. So even if you want it more on the edge just because this is Christmas doesn't mean you have to make it Christmas oriented. You can do any colors that you wish. Let me show you how to get all these strands through really quite easily and do that right now. So with three strands at one time what I like to do is that I like to put in a little knot that is very easy to come out. Okay so just a knot so you can pull all three at the same time. Okay so not too tough but all I wanna do is that I wanna drag the yarn. So from the top side to the bottom you just wanna drag your yarn through. Okay so it says beginning in the bottom edge. Okay so it says to beginning at the bottom edge. So uh, we're gonna begin at the bottom. It doesn't really matter which way you start but you're just gonna pop it through and see I'm not even using a crochet hook and just pop that knot up and down throughout the entire project. So what I would do is I would lie this uh, project on a table and basically you would have this all into position going all the way through. Okay so because I've only done three rounds you can see that I haven't really done enough to really show you the effect on the on the actual project but you can see you'll have these beautiful long strands of the color as it jumps over from one to another. So you're going to do that. So what do we need to do for the very top and the bottom? This is what I would do. There's really no instructions for it but this is what I would do. So what I would do is do all your strands at the same time. So weave them all don't and just leave them out hanging. Okay so don't do any tie work at this time. Get them all. Make sure that you can stretch your afghan so they all look like they're sitting in there but they're not uh, so tight that the afghan is kind of compressing. Okay. So once you get that done what I would do is take that yarn strand on the other side. You might want your crochet hook for it and just kind of pull through. Okay. Like so. And what I would do is take that knot out that you did. You're only gonna have the knot on the one side of your of your strand anyway. The other side will be knot free. Okay. And what I would do is that around this outside here just make, uh, just tie it. Okay so just kinda go un underneath it. And what we're going to do in the next uh, revolution anyway was that we're going to go over with the border. So make sure you get all the strands through. So there's no fringing on this particular one. And just take your time and just kinda do it as a knot. And what I would do is leave this strand down on top of the line and when you go to do the next layer what's gonna do is gonna get trapped underneath it and then um, you can just trim it after that point. If you wish to make two knots out of this just be conscientious that if the more knots you do with this um, the bulgier it will be. And if you look at the pattern on the top side uh, when we did it you'll notice that it does bulge up a little bit and it's probably cause it's coming up underneath some knots just like so. Okay that's for the border. So come to the other side. If you have excess left over don't worry about not cutting it. You can cut it if you wish. And just again do the same thing. Just you wanna come around and just kinda tie it on the other side. So the, so the biggest deal is that you don't want to ruin this by making it too tight. Okay and then what I would do then is do them all and then at the at the end of it just kinda just clean them all up before starting your border and then you can get that done really quite nicely. So that's what I would do. You could also use a darning needle to sew these into position using complementary yarn if you wish. And again that that's completely up to you if, if you wanna do that as well. So let's review on how to do a border. So you're noticing I'm, I'm not leaving these but I'm gonna pull them nice and tight. Okay pull them nice and tight once you get them all into position and you're good to go. So we can just uh, just safely leave that for now and then we'll, we'll deal with it when we come around. So I'm going to start off anywhere on the edge. Okay so let's just start off on the one side and I'm going to create a slip knot to join. Okay so we're gonna start off right in the edge corner and we're going to join your yarn. Okay leave that straggler out of position at this time. Just pull through. And we're gonna bury that under, underneath anyway. So we're going to chain one 
and we're gonna put three single crochets into the same one. So every corner is going to have three single crochets into it. Okay? And the instructions just tell us that it just wants us to go into every stitch um, going all the way around. Okay? So this is going into the top of the next uh, half double crochet. The next one is going to be a chain one space. Okay? And the next one is the top of the half double crochet. And this is how I'm gonna get rid of, of all of these, these ones here. Okay? So I just wanna just take it just looking for everything here. And the next one is the chain one space and the, st and the striping is in that one. So I just wanna kinda go over everything and just single crochet. And then do you see how I'm just going over everything and I'm going to single crochet in? Cause I'm trapping everything under underneath. Then I'm gonna go into the chain one space. Now on your patterning what's gonna happen is the next one will be the next strand going down. So you just gotta be conscientious. So you don't wanna drag these too far. Okay? Cause then you'll have another set to drag through. So what I could, what I would do at this point if it were me is that I would not confuse myself and just safely just trim all those out. And then you will not see things like you shouldn't. Okay, so let's uh, continue to go across. So just in the top of the next half double crochet, it's a single crochet. Chain one space. Okay, half double crochet in the next. Sorry, it's all single crochets. I'm just saying what the stitches are. So whenever I get to a corner, as I've kind of stated already, is that the end corners are always going to be um, one or three single crochets into the corner. Okay, so here is the last chain one space. So here's the corner and on this one here I want to put in three single crochets. Noticing I'm not putting it into a gap space because it's supposed to be a half double crochet for an edge. So you'll have an excessive gap if you do that. So down the sides it's not gonna be as straightforward but it says to equally space them. So here's a space so I would do a, one single crochet there and here's a like a, um, a side of a pro, um, half double crochet here. So I'm gonna go into there. And the next one is going to be a space. Now if you remember half double crochet is equaling a chain two. So you just basically you're gonna go into one um, chain one space kind of looking and then the other one's right into um, what appears to be a stitch and a space. And then this is on, on the top corner. Okay, so it go right into an actual end and it'll be three single crochets there. So the, the real, the reality is, is that I'm, did you see I wasn't counting? I'm just looking for where things should go. If it's starting to buckle in any way, I know it's not, I'm not adding the right amount of stitches. And then I'm gonna come along the bottom and just again, just follow the, what I did on the top. So one's, every other one's gonna be in a chain one space and the other one will be right into a half double crochet in the bottom side of it. So continue that same idea going all the way around and I'll meet you back and I'll show you how to do the reverse single crochet. Um, once you get onto the other side here, you're going to have the same issue that you had over here. And again, just follow it along. Get those I, uh, items stuck underneath. So the next one is a straggler or is the strand that's going down through. So just going around. So just put everything on top and going into the next one and just kind of going ov over top of everything to get it stuck underneath. Okay, see I'm going over everything and then once I'm satisfied with that just take your scissors and cut those out. And that's kind of where I started anyway so I'm good with that. I can clean that up afterward and I can carry on right to the another corner. So you can see I basically have gotten, I have my strands coming through I've got it buried under so well that you barely see it um, and then you know of course in the end you just wanna do your final touches and uh, get rid of it. So in the corners you're going to do your three single crochets to turn. So one, two and three. 
and then again down the side. So they got a big space there. The next one is in a what appears to be a side of a stitch, space, side of a stitch, and then space, and then the next one is your corner. Now that you started off with three single crochets, so at this point you just wanna go into the first single crochet and join that to finish that round. So you'll know if it's run, uh, right at this point, your blanket should not be buckling, it should not be doing any weird twists, it should be just nice and uh, just like you see here. So let's do the final round which is the reverse single crochet. So let's get ready and we're going to do the last uh, round and this will be the reverse single crochet. So we're not gonna turn our work at all. We're just gonna start working in the reverse. So we've been coming from this direction. We wanna go back in the same direction but without turning our project. This is also known as a crab stitch. You're going to chain one first and coming up to the stitch right before this, you're gonna insert your hook. So go down in, grab the yarn, pull through and then grab the yarn and pull through too. And you keep doing that. So come to the next stitch right before, in. Just make sure that yarn goes right up over the top and then pull through two. This stitch takes a little bit of time getting used to but it does a beautiful finishing effect when it comes to doing your afghans. It's a, you see this a lot in hats too. So just coming in, pull under and pull through. And it almost looks like in certain yarns it looks like it's a roping effect on the outside. It thickens up the border. So what are you gonna do on the corners? Well we're not gonna add anything to the corners. We're just gonna simply just continue to go around the corner for one sing, our reverse single crochet in each one of the existing stitches. So we don't have to do any extras for making the turn. This type of um, stitch it, it just does a lovely uh, appearance on its own. And just coming into each one. And again this stitch takes a little bit of getting used to. When I saw it for the first time I'm like whoa what is that? Okay so I wanna take my time and so you can see it has a beautiful look uh, when all is said and done and it's really quite a nice stitch and that's all you'd have to do in order to finish off this project. So just continue to do that. When you get back all the way to the, uh, the start over here you just have to join it with the slip stitch and then fasten off, weave in your ends and then your afghan is good to go. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Thank you so much for joining me and this is the Tad Plaid Throw, a free pattern available by Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you. Bye bye.